this guy has been doing that all morning. He's just, I don't know if he's trying, you know, he's trying to do like his mating cows. But he's a very vocal bird. Kind of adorable little bastard. Anyway, so this is what uh, most of uh, uh, coastal uh, San Diego County uh, looked like uh, before all the uh, development came. It's very beautiful. It's just a uh, maritime cactus scrub chaparral. And it's got the, uh, a lot of Euphorbia misera, a lot of different uh, species of Dudleya, Eriogonum, Fastigiatum. Uh, some rather large Dudleyas too. This is a small one. Got this uh, Linanthus, that Polymoniaceae, the Flax family. Lots of uh, Dicolostomas right there. And uh, of course, lots of uh, Selaginella cinerescens. Oh, Christ. Some feral cactus. There's Mammillaria. Two species of Mammillaria here. Brandigii and I believe Dioica. And uh, this is what is stand to be lost if uh, this should ever get developed. There was a fire here on the other side of the road uh, over there uh, last year sometime. And it's slowly starting to come back. But uh, because the fire wiped out a lot of the native uh, plant life, there's also uh, a lot of invasives getting a hold. Uh, which you can see there's some over there. Actually, that's all mustard. The yellow stuff, not the white stuff. That white stuff is some sort of uh, Baraginaceae. But, uh, you know, each mustard plant produces thousands of seeds. And then, of course, those get, uh, you know, put into the soil. And they slowly overtake the native, uh, this wonderful native habitat. This is probably one of the most pleasant uh, habitats to be in. It's You get the ocean right there. It's a perfect climate almost year-round. And uh, just generally gorgeous. Look at that nice soil crust, too. Again, of course, there's that Selaginella. I've never seen it green before. I've only seen carpets of that stuff uh, completely gray when, the dormant, when they're dormant. Still alive, but dormant. Nice Dudley hanging out beneath the Agave Shiae. Rosa Minutifolia. Ariagonum. Artemisia Californica. Very fragrant. Nice Dudley garden here. Look at all those. Anyways, you can probably tell there's something going on with the soil here. It's a very hard pan metavolcanic rock. And uh, that's why there's uh, another Takata cypress grove further uh, inland a little bit. You can see these Dudleys are just... Uh, just growing right on the ground, which is odd because you you know normally when you see Dudley is this genus of Crassulaceae, this succulent, they're growing on a cliff uh, face or an escarpment or something. Not here. There's also a, a, a few vernal pools, which are basically seasonal uh, mini ponds uh, where the water can't drain because it's such a hard pan substrate. Now, I wish I knew my Baraginaceae, uh, but uh, I don't. I want to say this is a Cryptantha, but uh, it might not be. But the, even if it was, I couldn't tell you what species because there's about 9 million of them. Uh, it does smell very nice. You see those five fused petals? And those uh, yellow interior parts of the flower. What a nice... Uh, one day maybe I'll start the... Paying attention to species, but for right now it's just uh, too much. But look at it. There's there's got to be thousands of them, and they smell absolutely wonderful. It smells nicer than a big can of marinara sauce that just got opened. Nice marine layer out there over the ocean. God damn. Got an interesting malacothamnus coming up. There's about 30 different taxa of these, too, so I uh, couldn't really tell you, but it's a fire-dependent mal. And this did burn, as you can see from uh, these agaves, which uh, surprisingly are just coming right back to life. 
uh, with this rain that uh, the northern peninsula got. These agave shoyas are just going off. Ah, oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? That's pretty nice. Look at this guy. He just passed out. He just passed out inside this malachite amnes flower. Maybe he's intoxicated. Is the pollen that good? Oh, there he goes. Probably heard me. Probably heard my obnoxious ass. Look at it. Is it an androgynal for? Like most Malvaceae I have? Such a weird uh, sexual uh, morphology. Look at all those stamens. Fused around a central column. God, I love this genus. This is a real nice genus. Iconic California floristic province genus. Ooh. Imagine how nice of a fortress that would be if you were a rodent. Shit, I just got stabbed in the knee like five times uh, trying to navigate through this whole little area. But then now we're back on the hard pan, so plant life is a little bit more scarce. Lichen's doing very well for itself, though. Look at this little aster. What is this guy? Look at those stringy leaves. Anyway, thick coats of lichen, too. Look at that. Bathed in the fag. They get a lot of fog here. Well, indeed, it seems to be some sort of aster. Look at that. Maybe I'll find one blooming. So like I was saying, the uh, hard pan here uh, makes for a real nice uh, a pond creating situation, as you can see. This metavolcanic rock, which uh, of course is impermeable. There's the Pacific Ocean. Uh, look, massive Dudley is everywhere. Salvia munzii, uh, Artemisia californica. Got some uh, Toyon, Heteromeles, Arbutifolia, Rosaceae. And uh, just a massive clump of Dudley is Look at it. I don't know if that's engines or what. I haven't uh, really bothered to familiarize myself with the species, but that uh, there's my boot for comparison. That is a massive uh, old growth clump of Dudley. And then even more surprising right here, which I did not expect to see, is this uh, artist formerly known as Coriopsis, now Leptosini uh, gigantia, it appears to be. Look at that uh, coalescent stem. I didn't even know that these occurred uh, down in Baja. Look at those massive flowers. And then, of course, you get the calliculi. See that? Those little spiky bracts on the bottom that subtend the, uh, the flower. These are nice. I've seen these from a freight train when I was uh, running trains south of San Luis Obispo on that deserted little stretch of beach years ago. This Metavolcanic substrate. I want you to repeat that to yourself maybe five or six times. Then uh, slap yourself around, throw yourself down the stairs, and tell yourself you've been bad. I'm just kidding. You could look at this uh, rock and see how it uh, really, again, we're, we're, we're given a prime example of how geology uh, dictates uh, not only what grows in a place, but what uh, evolves and adapts there. So, uh, I can't get over how fucking huge these Dudley are. <clears throat> anyway, you can see uh, this hard pan soil. Uh, it's going to present some obstacles to whatever might uh, be growing here or whatever might evolve to grow here. You could also see uh, it's leaving behind a precipitate of, uh, I doubt that's salt. I, that's probably something that's washing out of uh, the surrounding rock as the water percolates uh, through the soil into the rock what little soil there is into the rock and then uh, leaches out of the rock. It brings with it whatever minerals might be in that rock. I'm guessing it's uh, maybe some sort of calcium or silica or it could just be alkali deposits, it could just be salt. But uh, either way you could see the, the 
this little arroyo is not the uh, not completely dried up yet but as it does dry up it leaves behind these minerals it's also uh these tan these are essentially are tanks uh, which present an opportunity for wildlife to drink uh, of course and then of course uh, for some interesting uh, amphibian life which uh i wonder if there's even any around there still certainly frogs uh perhaps even maybe salamanders what's going on over here what is this? Oh, it's just Bahiopsis laciniata doing its thing. Such a nice habitat, too. There's been no one here all day. No development, no obnoxious people, no obnoxious white guys with GoPro helmets driving their stupid uh, oversized lawnmowers and go-karts around or dirt bikes and stuff like that. It's, it's very pleasant. I got to say, it's real pleasant. Now, as you can see, everything burned, like I was saying earlier. But uh, you do get some fire following plants like this poppy that is not yet uh, flowering. But uh, it's probably getting a lot of calisthegia too. Those white morning glories. And then uh, this aster which is emerging from a perennial taproot that uh, I'm not sure what it is. The Melosma lorina and a cardiaceae is starting to come back. And uh, you got a lot of uh, Basilia perii, as well as Eschelsia californica coming up on them, uh, them hillsides over there. I don't want to call it a super bloom because every time you use that word, a hummer crushes some cryptobiotic crust. Now here's upstream more that the uh, Dakota cypress population that just burned last year. And it, it's kind of sad to say, I, I don't see any cypress seedlings uh, germinating. I do see a lot of invasive mustard, and I see a lot of erodium, probably because uh, the cattle here uh, bring it in, of course, and then uh, they they also gnaw everything down. So uh, that's nice. That's nice. Another thing to thank cattle for, <clears throat> and ranching, highly fucking destructive, uh, somewhat unpleasant. The melosma's coming back. There's Mara, uh, Frax and his is coming back, but I don't see any cypress seedlings. There are more up the road though. I, I did see them last night coming in. They're only about an inch or two. So there's one one single uh, seedling I've seen here. It doesn't seem to be that great. Maybe they just maybe they just need a year or two. Maybe just need some moisture. You can see this is all a, an even age stand of the cottage cypress. A lot of dicolostoma coming up. Not too much of the uh, cypress though. There's a little soccer ball cones. But of course, open in response to fire. Yeah, plenty of calisthegia. Plenty of melosma. Here's Dendromicon regida, one of the first things to come up after a burn, just like clockwork. Bush poppy. They come up after a burn, they live for a few years, and they start looking like hell by year four or five. They're still hanging in there, but they're not doing as well once the other stuff, you know, has started to come back and you've gotten a regeneration of whatever it was that burned. Like this Ducati Cypress seedling. This little guy right here. Look at that, you got a species of Mara cucurbitaceae just dangling from the trees like that. Just a giant seed pod ready to go. Supposedly uh, these uh, were used to stun fish, but uh, I don't know about that. I do know that they have a massive underground tubercle. They call them man roots. They can get as big as a corpse, you know? Very heavy underground tubers, that's why they're doing so good here even though they're just been you know coming back the year after the first year after the fire here's a nice patch of agave shy eye blooming just a giant stalk of sugar that's all that is oh it smells pretty good here it's just a massive bloom of uh Cryptantha, Listinia, Castilea, Dicolostoma, Salvia munzii. And a uh, 
quite a stemming. That uh, cream colored on there. Pepper Veracea. Oh yeah, and lay it. 